Howdy folks, Ren City again, bringing you another NBA recap. 16th week now of doing this, it's crazy, it's been a blast. Last few games wrapping up in the NBA before the All-Star festivities in Indianapolis and in Indiana, which is starting today, Friday, February 16th, if something happens that doesn't let me upload it today, but it'll be fine, it'll be fine. But hey, welcome, week 16, like I said, but... uh. Let's get right into this. So let's uh before we start, you know, doing the team recap like we usually do, let's talk about what's going down this All-Star weekend. We got the celebrity game. You got one team coached by Unc Shannon Sharp, you know, with 50 Cent, you know, typical coaches there, taking on a team coached by Stephen A. Smith of ESPN, Little Wayne, and Asia Wilson of the Las Vegas Aces. Shannon's team, I'm not going to lie. I don't know a lot of these celebrities. Maybe I'm just out of touch now. Or maybe it's the people that are out of touch, not me. I don't know. We'll see. But there's four people I recognize on this team. Dallas Cowboy defensive beast, Mika Parsons. WNBA star with the Seattle Storm, Jewel Lloyd. Actor Quincy Isaiah from the show Winning Time. Canadian personality Lily Singh. Those were the only people I knew on that team. The other people making it up, ra rapper NULAA, hopefully I got that right. YouTuber Kai, I've heard of him. Indie driver Connor Daly, I'm not too familiar with him. Country singer Walker Hayes. Singer SIR and Chinese actor Dylan Wang. Again, I don't know who a lot of these people are, but I'm interested to see if Parsons is going to throw one down. He's a beast on the field, and I know he can throw it down. On uh, Stephen A's team, a few people I recognize, former NBA champion, Metal World Peace, some remember him as Ron Artest. Houston Texans, outstanding rookie, offensive rookie of the year, in fact, CJ Stroud. I know he can ball too, so I'm interested to see him. You got Backstreet Boy, AJ McLean. Singer-actor Jennifer Hudson and WNBA star with the Washington Mystics, Natasha Cloud. The rest of the team are some people I'm not familiar with. Basketball entertainer Jack Ryan. I thought that was a character. Italian high jumper Gianmarco Tamberi. He looked familiar. Musician Adam Blackstone. YouTuber Tristan Yass. And James Beard winning chef Kwame Onwachi. I feel like I've seen him before too, but it'll be an interesting uh, interesting game. Hopefully no one gets hurt. You know, that's a buzzkill when you have a celebrity go down. <laughs> we all know Tom Segura's knee injury. It's a, well, everything injury. It's bad <laughs> when he went up for a dunk. Um, but uh, yeah, for MVP, I'm going with CJ Stroud, the Houston Texans. Like I said, I know he can ball. If he wants that trophy, he'll get it. Obviously, Jewel Lloyd or Natasha Cloud could take over and win this, but I think they like sharing it because it's an exhibition, and, you know, we'll see what happens on this fancy LED court everyone's hyping up, different animations, it should be fun, we'll see, maybe that's a glimpse of the future of courts going forward. Another big event on Friday, Rising Stars game, this should be pretty cool, four different mini-team tournament, I highlighted all the players that were involved on the previous episode, now it's decided on the teams, Pau Gasol's team, you got uh, Wizard... Excuse me, Bilal Koulibaly, Miami's Yamiakas Jr., the Hornets' Brandon Miller, Warriors' Podzimski, Rockets' Jambari Smith Jr., OKC's Kaysen Wallace, and Spurs' Victor Wembenyama. Then you have Indiana Fever legend Tamika Catchins. She was a baller back in her day. Her squad has Magic, uh, Paulo Bancaro, Pistons' Jalen Duran, and Jaden Ivey. Utah's Keontae George, Portland's Scoot Henderson, Sacramento's Keegan Murray, and Grizzlies', Grizzlies Vince William Jr., who will be replacing Dyson Daniels of the Pelicans, who's out with injury. Former Pacer, Indi or Jalen Rose, sorry, uh, he's got a squad with Pelicans rookie Jordan Hawkins, OKC's Chet Holmgren, Utah's Walker Kessler, Mavs Derek Lively, Pacers Benedict Matherin, Spurs Jeremy Sohan, and J-Dub from OKC, and uh, Shaden Sharp's injured, he was in there, so Sohan will be replacing Sharp. Then you have one more squad with Detlef Schrempf, another Indiana Pacer. Uh, team, former Pacers, sorry, a team of G League players, Izan Almanza, Dem Dematis Bazelis, Tyler Smith, Oscar Shibwebwe, Alondres Williams, and last year's slam dunk contest winner, Mac McClung. Ron Holland was named, but he'll miss, and he'll be replaced with Imani Bates. I love Imani Bates watching him play, so it'll be interesting to see him out there. Lots of talent, and lot the league's looking like it's in some good hands. I got to go with Pau Gasol's team there. Some bias with Wemby, but that team looks stacked. Brandon Miller has been lighting it up, so now he can show the rest of the world what he's been doing in Charlotte. 
Saturday night, that's the that's usually the big fun night, right? You got skills challenge, that's a fun one. Interesting groups of teams here. You got Team Pacers with Halliburton, who's starting in the All Star game. Benedict Matherin, the Canadian, and Miles Turner taking on uh, the team top picks with Paulo Bancaro, the Magic, T Wolves Edwards, and Victor Wembanyama. And you have Team All Stars: Toronto Raptors All Star Scotty Barnes, Phillies Tyrese Maxey, and Atlanta's Trey Young. Pretty good team. I think that Team All Star should take this All Star Skills Contest. They have the three guards. I know they uh, they have those big guys, right? You have Wembenyama, and then you have uh, Miles Turner and the other one. But I think, uh, I don't know, Scotty Barnes, he plays pretty good off the ball. I think he's going to surprise people here. Or with the ball, sorry. Uh, Three-point contest. It's become one of the biggest parts of the weekend. Damian Lillard's trying to defend his title. But I see Donovan Mitchell winning this, and he'll become the first player to win both the three-point contest and the dunk contest. A few have tried but never have completed it. And remember, Donovan Mitchell won the contest back in 2018, so there shall be history. You watch, Mitchell will win the three-point contest. Uh, just like that, the next event will feature some amazing shooters in their own right. St Steph Curry, you know him, obviously, Golden State Warriors, taking on New York Liberty sharpshooter Sabrina Ionescu, three-point challenge. Be interesting to see who takes that regardless it should bring excitement from everybody and all different kinds of people to check it out should be fun that night wraps up with the dunk contest and i'm thinking miami jamie yakas jr will win this one mac mcclung will be taking them on in there you got Toppin, jacob Toppin in there as well and jalen brown from the celtics so that should be fun but i think yami yakas jr will be hoisting that trophy you have an early game on sunday with some g g league matchups and then you have the 73rd NBA All-Star Game. It's lacked defense in the worst way the last few seasons, so I'm hoping they can apply some kind of resistance. Make this some kind of game. We're talking about the game and not the lackluster defensive play. But we'll see what happens. Lots of stars on the court. MVP could go in a lot of different ways. I'll get more to the Milwaukee Bucks in a little bit here, but I think how they're coming into the break, I think Giannis Antetokounmpo is going to go batshit crazy and win the MVP. We'll see. But we'll, uh, we'll see what happens here. So now you're all prepped for the weekend. You know what's going to happen, All-Star Weekend. You heard it from the Ren City's mouth. Let's go to the team recaps. Eastern Conference, Atlantic Division, starting with the team with the best record in the NBA. Still, the Boston Celtics. They went 4-0 this past week. Winners of six in a row now. They won a tight one against the Wizards in a surprisingly close game. And then they go on the road and beat the Heat and Nets. Two different games before returning home and absolutely dominating the Nets. 136 to 86. Yeah, a 50 point win to go into the All Star break. I've said it once, I'll say it again. This team, best starting five in the NBA, you know? And a lot of people question some of the moves by Brad Stevens. Breaking up this core, getting rid of Marcus Smart, Malcolm Brogdon, big man Robert Williams. You have Chris Stapps, Porzingis, and Drew Holiday coming in. That combined with the improved play of Derek White, like I said, best top five in the league. It would be cool to see Jalen Brown in the dunk contest, too. You don't see all-stars in the dunk contest anymore. Last time was 2018 with then Pacer, who are, the Pacers are hosting the all-star weekend this weekend. Then Pacer, Victor Oladipo participated. You might remember with the Black Panther mask. That was kind of cool. But that was the last time an all-star participated in the dunk contest. So it's cool that Jalen Brown's doing that. And we know Jason Tatum's going to be starting in the All-Star game. So cool for the Celtics being involved. They're, like I said, number one team in the league right now. Next up in that division, a team going in the opposite direction right now, the New York Knicks. They were looking so good for a while. They went 0-3 this past week and have now lost four in a row, sitting fourth in the East. This team has literally been limping into the All-Star break with injuries. They were beaten by the Pacers at home. They go on the road and lose a very controversial game to the Houston Rockets. With the game tied, Aaron Holiday had the ball come to him. He threw up a prayer Jalen Brunson did the old dot jumping you know he jumped by him didn't contact him the shot was missed but the ref said uh, 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 there's a foul they got free throw as they hit it they won the game wow it was insane how that happened and then after the game head official was like yeah my bad I fucked up and even the the two minute uh, official reading said yeah they fucked up so the Knicks said you know what let's protest this they sent it in I guess with the $25,000 fee I didn't know you had to pay for that but yeah they filed the protest the, the league has time to respond they haven't responded as of the recording of this we'll see what direction they go in but I say fuck it just play it out I told 
Tony Kornheiser mentioned this, my man, I'm a hero there. He said, you know, this is a simple one. He missed at the buzzer. Play the five minutes of overtime. Fucking throw it on national TV. Five minute game, you know, like let him figure it out because it's unfair, you know. This is something that's easily fixable, you think. And it hadn't even remembers the last time an NBA protest was even successful. You have to go back to 2007, 2008. Game between the Miami Heat and the Atlanta Hawks, back when Shaq was in the Heat, he fouled out with 51.9 seconds remaining. However, the scores table had it wrong, and Shaq just had five fouls, not six. So they replayed the final 51.9 seconds before another Hawks-Heat game. It didn't change anything. The scoreline remained the same, but hey... It has happened, so we'll see what happens here. The Knicks just need to get healthy after the All-Star break. Hopefully Randall can come back soon. OG, everybody. We'll see. <laughs> uh, once they're healthy, we see what this Knicks team can do. And it'll be cool to see Jalen Brunson in the All-Star game. Well-deserved. Probably should be starting. And uh, he's in the three-point contest. Like I said, Jacob Toppin, he'll be in the dunk contest. We know what his brother Obi has done, winning the contest back in 2022. And we'll go from New York, we'll go to Philly. Sixers went 2-2 two and two this past week. Sixers lost a close one at home to Atlanta, but bounced back by going on the road and beating the Wizards. And then going to Cleveland and snapping the Cavs' nine-game winning streak. They then go on the All-Star break by losing to Miami. And the Sixers have been trying to stay afloat without MVP Joel Embiid, who had knee surgery. And they're also trying to institute new players in the lineup. Buddy Heald, he's been looking great in the new uniform. Tyrese Max, Tyrese Max he's showing why he deserves to be in that All-Star game. And a lot of people this summer were like, what the hell are the Sixers doing giving backup center Paul Reed all this money? You're seeing it right now. With Embiid hurt, he's holding down the middle pretty damn well. You know, he can't be Embiid, but he's doing what Paul Reed needs to do, and it's it's amazing. He's holding it down. I think very underrated what he's doing there. And also, the Hornets, they, uh, they came to an agreement on a bio with Kyle Lowry, so... He's coming home. Kyle Lowry's going back to Philadelphia to join the Sixers, reunite with Nick Nurse. They were together with the Raptors when they won a title. So lots of cool stuff coming up there. We go back to New York. The Brooklyn Nets, they went 1-2 and two this past week, thumping my Spurs in a home game. They then lose to the Celtics and then lose to the Celtics, the latter being by 50, which I alluded to earlier. This team, it's tough to read, that 50-point drudging. Look like a young team who had their eyes on a lengthy all-star break. And what trip? Where are we going? I feel like this is still Mikael Bridges' team. And then there's, you know, a question mark at the end of that sentence. Because is it Cam Thomas' team? I don't know. He seems to be the guy some nights. Ben Simmons is trying to come back. Looking flashy as ever whenever he does. But... I don't know. It seems tough to read. The Dennis Schroeder move was good because Spencer Dinwiddie wasn't really helping the team at all. He seemed to slump a bit here. We'll get more on him with his new team later. But, <clears throat> excuse me, Dennis Schroeder's looking all right there in Nets colors. And Lonnie Walker, I feel when he's on the floor, they look better. One consistency is Nick Claxton. The dude's been doing all right, averaging a double-double. He's got 2.3 blocks per game. At least one steady force in there. And it'll be interesting to see which Nets team come out of the All-Star break. And then we wrap this division up with the Toronto Raptors. They went 0-3 this past week. All games at home. And they all had, you know, some pretty newsworthy events going down at the, each of them. So... They uh, what they did first they would ho they would lose to the streaking Cavs team then they hosted the Spurs and got blown out and the big talking point in that one was after the game well just before after the game when Scotty Barnes we we're saying he's an All Star left the bench walk into the locker room before the game's even over a bad look in any circumstance especially for the face of the franchise or of the league as Darko went into on that one rant when they weren't getting any calls. <laughs> But, uh, you know, he had an awful game just third time. He didn't reach double digits this season. You could sense frustration. He publicly apologized. Coach Darko said he's learning, you know, on how to be a leader and how his actions influence the rest of the team. I guess you can call it a learning experience for everyone. And then the Raptors would uh, wrap their week up by hosting the Pacers. A lot of emotion there. Pascal Siakam returning to the team that he's only ever played for. Great tribute, great welcome. You had a whole trip, a whole section of Siakam jerseys. It was great to see. Tough. And he he might have hit the game winning basket against the Raptors too. So that's a rough way for the Raptors to go into the All Star break on this losing streak, but. 
This break could be just what they need, and they can maybe come back a little rejuvenated, figure some shit out, right? Scotty B, hopefully he's got a good All-Star weekend. Hopefully he doesn't leave early and go to the locker. <laughs> Too soon? Anyway, we'll go from the Atlantic to the Central, division-leading Cleveland Cavaliers, team with the second-best record in the East. Went 2-1 and one this past week, beating up on the Raps, which I just mentioned. They'd return home and have the Sixers, like I said, end their nine-game winning streak. Darius Garland had a chance at the buzzer to win that, which would have which would have been a crazy comeback. They were down most of that game, but he caught all iron. Cavs were bounced back by getting an actual comeback win over the Bulls in a game the Bulls seemed to have early. But like I said, this is one of the hottest teams in the league right now. I mentioned the Celtics, how they have one of the best top five in basketball. The Cavs, while finally healthy, they got a pretty damn good one too. Mitchell's looking like an all-NBA player. Like I said in the previous episode, if he wasn't hurt early in the season, I think he'd be starting the All-Star game. Evan Mobley's back. Him and Jared Allen. Best front court in the league. You know, Max Struess in there. Darius Garland. Like I said, that's a damn good top five. Starting five. One of the best. Six-man of the year candidate, Chris Karis LeVert. But it's not just him off the bench. You have George Niang and Isaac Okoro's really popped his three lately. I was, at the beginning of the season, I was like, why are you bringing in Struess? I, Okoro's the guy. It looks like Okoro's the guy off the bench. Struess is doing amazing in that starting lineup. And this is the Okoro I expected earlier in the season. He's taking away minutes from Sam Merrill, who had a wicked stretch earlier when all these injuries were going up. But, you know, he's kind of been relegated back to the bench. But he's a professional. He'll be ready to go when called upon. I expect this team to continue winning after the All-Star break. Love it. And if they do, J.B. Bickerstaff. Because I want to give that man a Coach of the Year trophy. Uh, next up in the Central, team with third best record in the East, the Milwaukee Bucks. Went 2-2 two and two this past week. And now 3-7 and seven since Doc Rivers took over as head coach. Not ideal. The, puck, the Bucks crushed the Hornets and then pounded defending nu- champion def- Denver Nuggets. You're like, hey, they're figuring it out. Then they'd host the Butlerless Miami Heat and lose by 26. Then they'd follow that up by going on TNT on national television, losing to the Memphis Grizzlies, a very depleted Memphis Grizzlies team. Damian Lillard had the ball you know, late in the game with a chance to tie it up, almost turning it over at half getting it back for a quick chop up, chuck up at the buzzer that was just a fuck up, didn't hit anything. The Bucks getting upset, like I said, by this Memphis team who's got names you're not going to know when you hear them probably, but it's a very tough and embarrassing loss. After the game, Doc Rivers was saying, we have some guys in Cabo right now, you know, saying their mindset was elsewhere, and after that lackluster performance, you can't really blame him for saying that. Losing to a team near the bottom of the Western Conference without anybody in the line up for a championship team i picked them at the beginning of the year to win a title and i felt confident in that they are not giving any confidence right now i imagine bucks former coach adrian griffin probably popped some champagne after that grizzlies win you know him getting fired with such a good winning record he was highly heavily scrutinized tons but you know what adversity comes to everybody and we'll see what it does with these bucks coming out of the all-star game all-star break that's when we really find out what this team's made of, and there's tons of pressure on Doc Rivers, you know? They brought you in the fix, and you ain't fixed them much right now. A few bucks that won't be in Cabo. We know Giannis and Dame are starting in the All-Star game. Dame's in the three-point contest defending his title. His teammate Malik Beasley's in there challenging him, and still crazy to say Doc Rivers with 3-7 and seven record this season will be coaching the East All-Stars. Just... Just crazy. Got a feel for Adrian Griffin, man. But uh, on to the host of the All-Star Games, the Indiana Pacers. They went 2-1 and one this past week, beating the Knicks in Madison Square Garden. And then they'd lose a few nights later to a New Look Hornets team. They then, like I said earlier, go into Toronto and win that close one with Siakam hitting a clutch basket against his former team in a fantastic atmosphere. Siakam, always a great Raptor, and he'll always be remembered there. But he's really starting to develop with All-Star Tyrese Allibert, and his minutes are starting to climb up. After he's returning from that hamstring injury that they've been really, really passive with on his return. And uh, Doug McDermott, he's been coming in and shooting just like he has anywhere he's gone. You know, Isaiah Jackson, good to see him filling in. Miles Turner was out with illness against the Raptors. And Jackson putting up 15 points, 11 boards, just showing they have even more depth. This team has tons of depth. And it's just who's up this night, who's up this night. The main thing is Halliburton starting to show up each night, and he's not hurt. And he's involved in a lot of shit this weekend, you know. He's in the three-point contest. He's in the skills. He's in the game. Let's not – I don't see him playing a lot of minutes in the game. Rick Carlisle's probably – calling 
calling in and saying, hey, Doc, don't play my man. But Doc's probably like, hey, let's run this guy. Let's run him. Let's help the Central Division here. <laughs> we'll see what happens there. But I'm very excited to see what the Pacers do coming into the second half of the season. Rick Carlisle starting to figure that rotation out. Let's see some more Benedict Matherin. I'd like to see that. We'll go from Indiana to the Windy City. The Bulls went 1-2 and two this week. They had some tough matchups, and they could have easily went 3-0. and oh, Giving up a fourth-quarter lead in Orlando and then losing to the Magic in overtime. They'd bounce back by winning a high-scoring affair over the Hawks. Shout-out to Ayo Dosunmu. Dosunmu, sorry. He stepped up and had 29 points in that win over Atlanta. Then they give up a big lead again. I mentioned it earlier, losing to the Cavs. A lot of people question why didn't the Bulls make any deadlines at the trade deadline. I think a big part of it was the Levine injury, and I, I kind of questioned it too. I thought this team would have been blown up by now, but they're playing pretty good, you know, and I know it's a lot easier said than done, but to put your foot on the opponent's throats when you're winning, but it seems that's really what this team's missing right now. I know it's a big thing to be missing, but the talent's there. Kobe White's improved play, like, man, we'll get more to most improved player of the year, but he's got to be up there. I, it, it seems like Donovan's done it more for matchup purposes, like when he's playing against the Timberwolves and whatnot, but I like seeing the Vucevic drumming, the big man out there, you know, going big or go home, like we said with the Cavs, they got the Allen Mobley thing. It's not bad, you know, and DeMar's still doing his thing, still rocking the mid-range. It's a good team to watch, you know, they're sitting ninth, in the playing spot, and I'm very interested to see if this little break's going to be what the Bulls need to kind of jump up the standings. We'll wrap up the Central Division going to Detroit, and they went 0-3 this past week. They were in a tight one with the Clippers before losing that, and then they'd get blown out the next two games, losing to the Lakers and then to the Suns. And there was some real drama before that one against the Suns. In the back hallways pregame, there were some words exchanged between Pistons big man Isaiah Stewart and Suns big Drew Eubanks. So he has some history from the last game. You know, they're not really good friends, obviously. Said they went chest to chest before Stewart dropped his bags and threw a punch, hitting Eubanks in the face. And sources say Eubanks barely flinched. I don't know if it was like a Drago from Rocky, like, I'll break you. I don't know. He's not Russian. I know. I don't know why I even went to Rocky there, but he took the punch, barely flinched. Two were separated. Stewart, Stewart. Stewart was detained by Phoenix police and obviously didn't play in the game. Suns won that game easy, easily, like I said, but Stewart was arrested and issued a citation before getting released. Said the NBA's reviewing the footage, checking the video, doing their investigation. It's uncertain what kind of suspension Stewart will get for this, and it's kind of unfortunate that they're talking about that because Simone Fantecchio, he's been a great fit for Detroit for coming, coming from Utah. We're seeing more Jaden Ivey, Jalen Duran, Cade Cunningham, Osser Thompson, Marcus Sasser. We're seeing more of these young dudes get out there and show what they can do. You know, Evan Fournier's getting some minutes. It's fun to see what these young studs can really do now. A lot of them are involved in the All-Star festivities I've mentioned. And this is a team that I'm expecting to see good things out of the, the, the latter side of the All-Star break here. We'll wrap up the Eastern Conference by going to the Southeast. Two-way tie at top of the Southeast Division. We'll start with the Miami Heat. Tied for seventh best record in the East. The uh, Heat went 2-1 and one this past week. Jimmy Butler missed those games. So he's taken a leave of absence from the Miami Heat to deal with a death in the family. Never an easy thing to do. Hope his family's coping well. The Heat would lose to the Celtics in Miami. They would then go to into Milwaukee and crush the Bucks by 26. Which I alluded to earlier. They then go into Philly and beat the Heat for the All Star game. This team is doing what they always do. Cliche team, you know, Heat culture, next man up. Any of those cliches you throw up, the Heat actually do it. You know, Bam Adebayo is playing like an All Star for sure, justifying his inclusion in the game. Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero, they've been on point. You know, their shots looking good. Can't d give Yame Yakez Jr. enough praise. And my pick to win the dunk contest, if you remember. He's going to win it. Yame Yakez Jr., look out. This team still needs to get Terry Rozier back and try to get him fitting in. Hope things are good with Jimmy Butler. But come playoff time, no one's going to want to play the Heat. Next up, we're sticking in Florida, the Orlando Magic. They went 2-1 and one this past week, winning that comeback game over against the Bulls in overtime we mentioned earlier. They then host the Thunder and getting beaten by that thunderstorm. They then bounce back by hosting the Knicks and thumping them. Franz Wagner is starting to look like Franz pre-injury, taking a little pressure off all-star Paulo Bancaro, even though... Van Carroll's still lighting it up. He is an all-star. He Against the Knicks there, 36 points, 7 boards, 5 dimes. Deserved all-star for sure. 
We'll go with the Atlanta Hawks. Hawks went 2-2 two and two this past week, beating the Sixers in Philly before returning home and beating the Rockets. They then fall to the Bulls before getting absolutely destroyed by the Hornets. That might have been another instance of eyes on Cabo because, yeah, they look very disinterested in that loss to the Hornets. This is a team trying to figure it out still. You know, there's some damn good talent. They can strip off some wins after the All-Star group break but they got to crank it up on the defensive side i don't know how i thought they'd be better when that end you know i gave capella props for the season this team is not a good defensively but you know they're floating on the level of mediocrity but we'll see what happens after the all-star break jalen johnson another contender for most improved i'm glad and trey i'm glad trey young's getting his flowers and he's in the all-star game even if it was as a replacement he's in the three-point contest as well maybe he can put some more respect on his name Go to the Charlotte Hornets. Went 3-1 and one this past week. Yeah, the Hornets. They've won three in a row with their new lineup. But there was some news off the court with the Hornets. President of Basketball Operations, Mitch Kupchak, he stepped down from his position. And star forward, Miles Bridges, had uh, two separate charges going on against him. They were dropped. But back to on the court, the Hornets were blown out by the Bucks. They were a little short-staffed after all the deadline trades. Once the new reinforcements came in, you could see instant improvement on this Hornets team. They play the next three games at home and win them all. They beat the Grizzlies before surprising the Pacers. Then they blow out the Hawks, which I just mentioned. The Brandon Miller, he's the real deal. Showing everyone he's worthy of that number number two overall pick. Really stepping his game up lately, especially since the Rozier trade that's opened up more time for him. And uh, I told you all last episode after the deadline, look out for Trey Mann. He, I, he's the most underrated part of that trade with Oklahoma City getting Gordon Hayward in return. He's played pretty steady since coming to the Hornets and putting up 21 points, 8 boards, and 6 assists against the Hawks. It's a glimpse of what's to come. Trey Mann's stock rising. you got to pick him up if you're in Fantasy League, and someone's probably already got him. But uh, I just hope he can keep playing like that when LaMelo Ball comes back. I don't want him getting buried in the bench like he was in OKC. I feel like he can do some good here. And it's nice Charlotte having a three-game winning streak going on the All-Star break. Probably not a lot of people expected that. We'll wrap up the Eastern Conference going to the Wizards. They went 0-4 this past week. And the whole, they owed the longest losing streak in the league at eight games. Losing all four games this past week, obviously. They were in four of them, you know, which is good, you know. And early in the season, they were getting blown out and blown out and blown out. But uh, they lost to the Celtics, Sixers, Mavericks, and Pelicans. And despite those losses piling up, there were some bright spots. The play of Denny Avdia has really been blossoming. He scored a career-high 43 points and had 15 rebounds in the loss to the Pels. Now expecting his numbers to continue after the All-Star break. Another bright spot, Marvin Bagley's developing, slowly but surely. And, you know, they made a little more room with Gafford going, and I'm glad the Wizards held on to Tyus Jones. He's the perfect mold of a traditional point guard, and it's what this young team needs. Kuzma's still having a good season. I guess he was approached uh, before the deadline to see if he'd accept a trade. He said he declined it. Kula Bally's in the Rising game, so uh, Rising Stars game. It'll be interesting to see what he can do. Maybe there is light at the end of this tunnel in D.C. We'll see after the break here. We'll leave the East, go to the West, start in the Northwest. Division and conference leading Minnesota Timberwolves. They went 3-0 and this past week as they take a four-game winning streak into the break. Wolves destroyed the Clippers in, an L- in L.A., a game in which the Wolves certainly got pretty chatty. Maybe a move that could uh, come up later if these teams meet in the playoffs. Uh, the Wolves would then have back-to-back games in Portland and beat Portland in back-to-back games. This team's the best in the West right now and have pretty much held that spot down most of the season. There was a little bit of swinging there when the Clippers took the spot, Thunder had it briefly, but the, th- or the Wolves, for the most part, have hold- held it down. You know, they have Anthony Edwards in the All-Star game. Carl Anthony Towns will be there as well. He's in the three-point contest as well. This team's flying high. Coach Chris Finch coaching in the All-Star game. But this team will really be judged on how they play coming out of this. We know how good this team is. They're the best defensive team in the league. The sky's the limit when you play good defense. Thing is, the maturity of this team, the immaturity has been brought up a few times this season. Is it something they can work around, or will it show up in the biggest moment and cost them? We'll see. That's why we play, right? Next up in the division in the conference, Oklahoma City Thunder. They went 2-1 and one this past week. The whole team just decided not to show up in Dallas as they got destroyed by the Mavs. 
The real OKC did stand up in the next two games as they hosted the Kings, beat them before going to Orlando and beating up the Magic on the way to Disney World. They had some games off leading into the break, so this will be a nice long break for the Thunder. You know, SGA starting, well-deserved. His young teammates, J-Dub, Chet Holmgren, Kaysen Wallace, all involved in some festivities. We'll see what this young, potentially title-contending team will do after the All-Star break as they try to bring Gordon Hayward back in the lineup. He hasn't played since December 26th, went back when he was a Hornet, so this we'll see what he can do when he actually gets to play here. Next up in the division, the defending champion Denver Nuggets went 0-3 this past week, taking a three-game losing streak in the All-Star break, losing by almost 30 in Sacramento. The Nuggets would then get beaten up on in Milwaukee before returning home and losing to the Kings again. This time much closer than the game before, but still another loss nonetheless. Jamal Murray picked up an injury in that game against the Bucks, and he would missed the game against the Kings. Jokic played pretty lackluster against the bonus in the battle of two big European centers. The All-Star breaks well time for the, uh, the Nuggets. No break for Jokic. He'll be starting the game. I imagine he'll probably be wishing he was somewhere relaxing with horses. I still have faith in this defending uh, championship team. I have... I have faith that they can get back and repeat. Not tons, but, you know, they're capable. Hopefully this injury to Murray is nothing serious, and the, hopefully the break can uh, rejuvenate them going into the latter part of the season. Next up in the Northwest, Utah Jazz. They were on fire for a while, but then, you know, Jazz kind of slipped a bit. They went 0-3 this past week on a four-game losing streak. They'd lose big to the Warriors before losing big to the Lakers. They'd then host the Warriors again, and it'd be a pretty big, pretty entertaining shootout. You know, it could have went either way. Down the stretch, they were down by one. Marking and missed a three-point shot. John Collins, big offensive rebound. He looked a little derest and stressed, not sure where to pass it. He had Sexton just over here, but he had someone over here, and he launched it a good six, seven feet over his head in the biggest moment of the game. You could see how distraught he was. He had his hands on his head, his head down. Point guard stud, though, Colin Sexton, immediately comforting him. Perfect point guard. I, you've heard me preach how awesome he is since they put him in the starting lineup, and uh, he's just a good leader. But anyway, Curry would get fouled, hit two free throws, Jazz still have a chance down three, but Colin Sexton's three would catch all iron. Tough loss for the Jazz. You know, they were trying to get a win there coming into the break. They're just outside looking in on that play-in spot, and it may be tough for them to get back in there, but they have a good group right now. Looks like they're figuring the rotation out. Rookie Keonti George, he's going to be involved in some festivities this weekend. He's been great. He hit 33 points in that loss to the Wizards, or the Warriors, sorry. Uh, former All-Star Laurie Markkinen will be in the three-point contest as well this weekend. And uh, we wrap up the Northwest, heading to the Portland Trail Blazers. They went 0-3 this past week because they're on a six-game losing streak going into the All-Star break. They lose a low-scoring game at home against the Pelicans, but then they lost those back-to-back -back blowouts to the Timberwolves I mentioned earlier. This team's taking their lumps, as young teams do. Number three overall pick, Scoot Henderson's continuing to develop. Liking how he's growing alongside Anthony Simons. Jeremy Grant, the good vet, putting in scoring when he needs to. DeAndre Ayton, still showing flashes of what he's capable of, but that consistency needs to be there. We need to see that every night out of him, you know? It would be nice to see these young guys get some spotlight this weekend, All-Star Weekend, and what's been a season filled with mostly losses. So hopefully some positives for those youngsters. We'll leave the Northwest, go to the Pacific. Division-leading Los Angeles Clippers, team with the third-best record in the Western Conference, went 2-1 and one this past week, beating the Pistons before getting blown out by the Wolves. I mentioned how chatty the Wolves were up in that one. The Clipper vets did not look too pumped about that. The Clippers then faced off of the Warriors in a classic. The Clippers didn't have Kawhi Leonard, and the team showed some real toughness and a real great example of how to deal with adversity. Teron Liu was ejected from that game, and... Norman Powell, he got hot, and he helped erase the big Warriors' lead and helped the Clippers get a lead. A big win for the Clippers going into the All-Star break. This team looks like, dare I say, a championship team again. The vets are ready, you know. They have the right amount of youth. They have the Kawhi Leonard. If he's healthy, that's the thing. If this team's healthy, you know, they can... They can get it done, you know. They just need to stay healthy. That's the big thing for a lot of teams. But this team, those main guys, Kawhi, Paul George, they got to be. Those two guys will be in the All-Star game. To what extent, I'm not sure. But we'll, we'll see this weekend. Next up in the division, Phoenix Suns, fifth best record in the West, went 2-1 and one this past week. Losing a close one at home, or losing a close one to the Warriors by heroic Curry shot. 
And that game had some drama between Warriors Draymond Green and Suns Yusuf Nurkic. We know their history when Green got suspended for giving them that little spinning elbow, I guess, earlier in the season. But the Suns would bounce back, winning a close one over the Kings. Then they'd have that Stuart Eubank scuffle pregame before their win against Detroit. Devin Booker was ejected after getting two quick texts in that game against uh, Detroit there. It's just weird how we see so many people ejected so soon this season. It's very weird. Bradley Beal's injury plague season continues. He re-injured his hamstring in that win over Sacramento. It said it's nothing serious, but hammies can be tricky, you know. Hopefully he can get back on the floor and we can see what this big three can really do. We know what the big two can do. They're both all-stars. KD's starting and Devin Booker's on the team as well. We go to the Californian capital, capital sorry, Sacramento Kings went 2-2 two two this past week, destroying the defending champions before going on the road and losing uh, to the Thunder and losing a tight one in Phoenix. They bounce back, beating the defending champions again, this time a tighter, a closer game. And Sabonis has been on an absolute tear since getting snubbed from the All-Star game. He's had... Three triple-doubles in those four games last week, including a 35-point, 18-rebound, 12-assist game in that loss to the Suns. It's a very good Kings team that can do some damage in a seven-game series, but uh, they have the eighth-best record in the West right now, showing you how deep the West really is. We'll go back to L.A. The Lakers were 3-0 and this past week as they took three consecutive, uh, or sorry, three-game winning streak into the All-Star game. Excuse me, I'm going to have a quick drink of water here. And all three of those wins were by double digits. Excuse me, home wins over the Pelicans and Pistons before going on the road and beating the Jazz before the break. LeBron didn't suit up for that Jazz game, but Rui Hachimura filled it admirably and finished with 36 points to go along Anthony Davis at 37. This team is so up and down right now. You know, some games they look lost and confused. Other nights it's like, damn, maybe I wasn't out to lunch when I picked them to represent the West in the finals. Anthony Davis has shown that he's worthy of all-star status when healthy. D'Angelo Russell has kept this team afloat during their struggles, and Reeves starting to play like the Reeves we expect him to look like. The addition of uh, Wave Spencer Dinwiddie's look great, him and Russell reuniting in, from their old Nets days. LeBron and AD, they're going to the big all-star game, and the rest of the team needs to rest up and get ready for that postseason push. We wrap up the Pacific Division with the Golden State Warriors. They went 3-1 and one this past week, and they've won five of their last six. They won that tight one over the Suns, a heated game with Steph Curry hitting a ridiculous three-pointer to put the Warriors up. And Draymond Green made a big physical play at the end of the game to keep, keep KD from attempting a shot. This Warriors team, they beat up on the Jazz, and they'd return home to host the Clippers in that cl thrilling game I alluded to earlier where Teron Lue got ejected and Draymond Green got into it, flashing his fingers. I got this many titles, y'all. And that kind of backfired when the Clippers came back and won the game. But the Warriors would bounce back and beat the Jazz again in this close game that I mentioned. Curry was big in that one, but the biggest news going in was how Klay Thompson was going to come off the bench. Rookie Podzinski was going to get the start over Klay, and that seemed to inspire Klay as he dropped 35 points in 28 minutes off the bench. Maybe that's the new key for Klay. This team is starting to get it together here, you know, and we'll see if that trend continues after the All-Star break. You know, it's kind of weird there's only one warrior in the All-Star game, and it's Steph Curry coming off the bench. But this team is about titles. That's the main goal of this season anyway. We wrap up the team recaps going to the Southwest Division, division leading New Orleans Pelicans. They went 3-1 and one this past week. They lost big in L.A. to the Lakers, but, man, they bounced back beating lower competition, which I challenged them to do last episode. Said this team's capable. They better not let up, and they lived up to it. I don't know if they heard it, but if they did... You're welcome. They, uh, they beat the Trailblazers, Grizzlies, and Wizards, taking a three-game winning streak in the All-Star break. It's crazy how this division-leading squad has the sixth-best record in the Western Conference and no All-Stars. It's crazy. But well, this team has enough talent to win it all, I think. I said that. But just getting it together at the right time. This, we know this big three is Zion Williamson, C.J. McCollum, Brandon Ingram. They do their thing. They have capable others, as Shaq always refers to them. JV, Jonas Valachunas, the Travis Kelsey doppelganger. He's been consistent. This Pelicans team should soar up the standings, like 
the main guys are all getting breaks. There's no excuses. They need to come on hot after the All-Star break. Next up in the division is one of the hottest teams in the league, the Dallas Mavericks. They went 3-0 and this past week. Six-game winning streak. They blew out the thunder, like I alluded or to earlier, before they beat the Wizards and Spurs. Luka and Kyrie continue to look like one of the best one-two combos. If anyone's still saying they can't play together, leave that. That old thing is not true anymore. They can do it. They just need to stay healthy and play with each other. Those trade deadline deals looking amazing. Last episode, I hyped them up saying how P.J. Washington and Daniel Gafford, two very different people that play a similar position, they just do it in different ways. And it's showing the Mavs, if they can stay healthy like a lot of teams, they can do just like I mentioned with the New Orleans Pelicans. After the All-Star break, they can sky up the standings, get, put some respect on the Southwest Division. <laughs> and they don't even have Dante Exum back. He's been out since the 26th so hopefully of January, so hopefully he can come back after the break and help this team even more. You know, Luke is going to be in the All-Star game. He's made for these types of game. He'll be throwing up more oops than a clumsy waiter, you know. We'll see what happens here. Next up in the division, the Houston Rockets went 1-3 and three this past week. They lose to the Raptors in a close one. A bummer for the home crowd not to see Raptor, former Raptor Fred Van Vliet, who's been out with that adductor strain. And the Rockets would lose to the Hawks before winning that controversial game over the Knicks that is currently getting processed and might have to get played out again. Maybe they'll play out the last five minutes. It should be good. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, the Rockets would then lose to Memphis and uh, that Grizzlies team who you don't really know who's on it some nights. But the young depth on this Rockets team, it's something else. We're starting to see more of Thomas play. Those rookie twins are amazing. I mentioned his brother Asar in Detroit. Man's really – he's good as well. It's insane. These guys can jump out the gym. They're long. They do it all on the court. Um, this team that just seems like they're having struggles in the tight the tight moments of games, and that's probably what's going to happen without your starting point guard. A lot of people don't refer to Van Vliet as Steady Freddy, you know, for no reason. He's a steady point guard, you know, that will really help this team in those closing moments. So hopefully he can get back from that adductor injury, and uh, these young guys will get some time to show off during the All-Star break, and we'll see what happens here going forward after. Next up in the division, the Memphis Grizzlies. They went 2-2 two and two this past week, losing to the Hornets and Pelicans before bouncing back and beating the Rockets and shocking the Bucks on national TV, as we alluded to earlier. This team's consisted of two-way players, 10-day contract players, but they go out and bust their ass every night for Taylor Jenkins, and that's all you can ask. Gigi Al- Allen? No, <laughs> it's not Gigi Allen here. Gigi Jackson has been an absolute beast for this team out of nowhere. Vince and Zaire Williams have been making names for themselves. Lamar Stevens looking like a steal of the deal in that deal with Xavier Tillman going to the Celtics. Look for the Grizzlies to keep you excited in all their games after the season. They might lose in some blowouts, but each game's going to be hard fought, and each guy's trying to make a name for himself. you got to love that. We wrap up the team recaps with my San Antonio Spurs. They went 1-2 and two this past week. Losing a tough one in Brooklyn, but they would bounce back and get a ridiculous win over the Raptors. I emphasize ridiculous because of what number one overall pick, Victor Wembanyama did. Wemby became just the fifth player in NBA history to record a 25-point, 10-rebound, 10-block, and 5 assists in one game. Join the likes of, I don't know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Ralph, Sam- Ralph Sampson, former Spur David Robinson, and Akeem Olajuwon. Olajuwon did it Four times. That's crazy. Akeem the Dream was a nightmare out there. Elite company for the rookie. The Spurs would then drop the next game to the Mavericks, but this team is still learning. The, they're learning on the fly. I'm liking the usage of Trey Jones, consistently a point guard. You know, Wemby, obviously. Vassell's looking good at times, and I'm liking Sohan in that Swiss utility knife role rather than bringing the ball up roll. And I don't know why I feel about Keldon Johnson's dip in minutes. Keldon Johnson's dip in minutes. I feel he's a stud on this team. I don't know why he's not getting a lot of time. But that's a team recap. How's your team looking? You know, are you getting ready for that playoff push? Are you looking into March Madness to see what kind of draft picks you are going to get? But uh, going in the All-Star break, we have some stat leaders here. Points per game leader, Mavericks, Luka Doncic at 34.2. 
Behind him, still above 30, is uh, OKC, Shea Gildas Alexander, Milwaukee's Giannis Antetokounmpo, Cleveland's Donovan Mitchell, and Phoenix's Kevin Durant round out the top five. In rebounding, Sacramento's non All Star, DeMontis Sabonis, leading the league with 13.2 rebounds per game. Behind him, Minnesota, Rudy Gobert, Lakers, Anthony Davis, Nikola Jokic, and Detroit's Jalen Duran. Ty- Tyrese Halliburton of the Pacers still leads the league in assists at 11.7. Atlanta's Trey Young behind him at 10.9. Luka Doncic, Nikola Jokic, and Clippers' James Harden behind him to round out the top five. The defensive side, OKC's SGA still leading the league in steals at 2.2. Cleveland's Donovan Mitchell and Sacramento's De'Aaron Fox tied at 1.9 behind him. And uh, two Clippers, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, rounding out the top five. Which brings us to some team stuff. The Ren City top five. Who's on it this week? You know, a few changes. Not really at the top. There hasn't been all year. The Boston Celtics stay atop the list. Minnesota Timberwolves in second. Cleveland Cavaliers at three. OKC Thunder at four. And the LA Clippers at five. So the Celtics, obviously, six-game winning streak going to the break. Timberwolves, four-game winning streak, and they're leading the West. It's pretty good. Cavaliers, they're continuing their fantastic play despite having that lengthy winning streak snap. They hold the third spot on the list. I have the OKC Thunder returning to the list despite that brutal loss to the Mavs. You know, and the Thunder or the defending champs lost three in a row, which kind of hurts them on this list. The Clippers stay on the list as well. Some outings that showed why they're one of the best teams in the league. The Mavericks' six-game winning streak, they can have them sniffing at the top five, and they're still seventh in the West. So if they continue that streak after the break, they'll be finding their way into the Ren City top five. So we'll wrap up this episode by giving out awards. We'll give out All-Star Break awards, you know. We'll keep it short and sweet as the mid-season awards announced by me, awarded from me. (laughs) <laughs> the season long race for the actual trophies will continue after the break but I'm saying hey if we got we got to give people trophies now like, give me some trophies we'll hand out some trophies so some mid season awards all star break pause rewards whatever you want to call them my MVP at this point Oklahoma City Shea Gilgis Alexander third best record in the NBA he's second in scoring at 31.1 averaging 6.5 assists 5.5 rebounds while also leading the league in steals per game I just mentioned it'll be a tight race going forward but if we had to give a trophy out now i'm giving it to him although philly's joel Embiid wasn't hurt you know he may get it and by may i mean he would get it we'll go to rookie of the year it's been close all year but san antonio spurs victor Wembanyama is getting the long neck nod from me that insane triple double with blocks was the icing on the big cake for me the battle will continue after the break here, but it's Wemby's right now. It's his to lose. Quick rookie shout-out, obviously, Chet Holmgren's in there, but give some love to Brandon Miller of Charlotte, who I mentioned, those Thompson twins, Detroit and Houston and Warriors, Brandon Podzimski, who seemed to have taken that starting spot from Clay Thompson. Coach of the year, look no further than the coach in the All-Star game, Minnesota's Chris Finch. I'm giving it to him. Leading the West at this point, no one saw that. What Missoula's doing in Boston is amazing, but we kind of expected that. The surprise factor is what tips the scale for Finch for me. Most improved player, I said there could be a few options there, but I'm giving it to Kobe White and the Chicago Bulls. A lot of people probably want to give it to Maxie, but I feel Maxie was this good already. Kobe White's rise is great. But Jalen Johnson's right behind him, but we're giving out trophies. There's only one. Kobe White, six man of the year, another tight one, you know, giving it to the guy right now, a guy from the Sacramento Kings, someone's got to give that team some love, you know, they're not getting any all-star love, <laughs> so Malik Monk, flamethrower off the bench, six man of the year at this point of the year, that's week 16 in the books, guys, we've got some fun all-star game stuff coming up, so tune in for that, should be good, I'm looking forward to more episodes, and I'm hoping next next week we can talk about the all-star fun not the lack of defense of who are these guys in the dunk contest. But hopefully it's good stuff. It's out there. I'm hoping the shootout between your girl, Sabrina Inescu, and Steph Curry goes down. If you want more sports, sports and shorts of sorts, with your man, Ren City, out every Monday, this upcoming one, episode 50. Should be fun. Thanks again for coming out. Enjoy the All-Star game, guys. Ren City out.